So I was looking at some guitars recently and I noticed something that I hadn't really noticed before and I'd be interested to hear what you think about the topic because I think it's quite interesting. Guitars are tools, instruments designed to make music with. That is their primary purpose. But I'm noticing now more than ever that guitars from bigger brands like Gibson, Fender, PRS, ESP are slowly creeping into the luxury item category. Now I think this is a very interesting topic and to explain why I think this is happening and how I think this is happening I'm going to go off on what might seem like a completely unrelated tangent but I promise you it's not, just stick with it for a minute and you'll understand why it makes sense to compare to guitars. Watches. They tell the time. You look at your wrist, you know what time it is, that's their primary purpose. And there's a bunch of Swiss made watch brands that sell models for more than the price of your house. But it wasn't always that way. Post World War II, 95% of mechanical watches were Swiss made. And they were tools. They told the time, and that's what they were sold as. But then in 1969, everything changed. A Japanese engineer came out with a watch that could be powered by a battery using quartz crystals. And these new watches were infinitely more accurate and cheaper than the watches being made in Switzerland. So naturally, if your only selling point for a product is being outdone by something that's a lot cheaper, that's not going to be good for business. And it wasn't. They called it the quartz crisis, and over the next 13 years, the Swiss watch industry was decimated. 40% of the watch builders were just wiped out. But then they turned things around, and it saved the entire industry. They did two important things. The first was create a brand that could compete with these cheaper watches. And they did. The Swatch brand was introduced and it was a success. The second thing they did was change the marketing completely. Instead of selling these mechanical watches which weren't as accurate as the quartz watches as tools, they changed things. They started focusing more so on how these were traditional, how there was a handmade nature and an experience attached. These mechanical watches were luxury pieces that showed status and were good investments. They were no longer just tools anymore. And that changed everything. Nowadays, Swiss watchmakers like Rolex, Artemar Piquet, Patek Philippe, Richard Mille, these sell watches for tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars. All for something that can technically, on a time-telling device, be outdone by a $20 Casio. Now for those that haven't clicked off the video, I'm sure that seems completely unrelated to guitars, but I don't think so. I think there are a lot of comparisons that we can make into the guitar market today. Firstly, what crisis could these established guitar manufacturers be facing today in the market? Well, similarly to the watch industry, better tools for less money. It's no secret that cheaper guitars are getting better and better. And nowadays, they're even offering some specs that you don't see or won't see unless you're paying a lot more money on some of these bigger brands. You won't see stainless steel frets on a Gibson any Gibson. And for locking tuners and, and other upgrades, you have to pay a lot more on Fenders, PRS, ESPs than you might have to on the cheaper brands. And it's also worth mentioning that some of these bigger brands have had some relatively recent turbulence. I'm thinking Gibson's bankruptcy in 2018 and Fender laying off 300 employees just last year. So what do you do? You challenge the competition with your own cheaper brand. Now Squire, Epiphone, PRS, ESC and LTD, they're not new brands by any means. But what is new is that the price brackets that these brands are encompassing are getting higher and higher. These sub-brands started out mainly as beginner guitars, starter packs, but look at them now. The most expensive LTDs are in excess of three grand. The most expensive PRS SE is 1600. The most expensive production Epiphones are 1800. And coming in somewhat more budget friendly, the most expensive Squires are a little over 500. These sub brands are now more equipped to compete with a lot more brands in these higher price categories. Which means, what are the main parent brands competing with? Where do they have to go? Well, the only place is up and that's in price. The cheapest priced Fender Strat is 1400 and that actually isn't too bad, all things considered. A Gibson Les Paul Standard is 3k. The cheapest PRS Custom 24, their most famous and iconic model, is 4 grand. And if you want an ESP that actually says ESP on the headstock, it's gonna set you back near enough 5 grand. And that's the cheapest one I could find. So we're talking expensive and, dare I say, luxury prices, what other comparisons do we have to our watch story? Well, let's talk experience. The higher priced an item goes, the more unique the experience becomes. Because 
at a certain point you're not paying for the actual item, you're paying for the experience. And that's very evident in something like the Kirk Hammett, Peter Green, Gary Moore, Greeny, Les Paul experience thing. They charged 50 grand for 50 guitars. Now are those guitars themselves actually valued at 50 grand? N no, because you can buy one from Gibson for a little over 20. What they were selling was an experience along with the guitar. Flights out to Nashville, hotel stays, dinner with Kirk Hammett and 99 other people, then a signed guitar as well as factory tours. It's an experience. And you could also look at something like the PRS Wood Library. That's an expensive guitar, most certainly, big books, but it's a different experience. Because if you can offer a memorable experience, it is probably likely to draw bigger money sales. Because if it's just the same experience as walking into the store, picking a guitar up off the wall and buying it, you could do that and experience that for a lot cheaper. So what about guitars as symbols of status? Something to show off. Well, there's definitely been some active attempts to try and make this more of a thing, but to how well this is working, I'm not sure. Sure, a PRS Wood Library is a very pretty guitar, and I'd know how much you spent on it, but probably most normal people wouldn't. You're really just going to impress nerdy guitar players, and maybe that's what you want. There is already the established meme that PRS's are the doctor, dentist, lawyer guitars anyway. But there still is a significant difference between a guitar and other items that are used as status symbols, and that difference tends to be skill level on how you can use the item, where you can bring it. And well, look at a watch. You don't need any skill level to put it on your wrist and look at it, and you can bring it anywhere. Take a designer bag. You don't need a skill level to put anything in it, and you can bring it anywhere. The biggest skill level with a luxury item would probably be like a luxury car. You actually have to know how to drive, but even then, a lot more people know how to drive than they do know how to play guitar. By nature of a guitar being an instrument, it's going to be harder to show off as a luxury status showcase item, which I think is kind of the point of those. But don't ask me, I don't have a Ferrari or a Rolex or a Louis Vuitton bag. I, I don't understand it. but. I think that's the point, and it would be harder to show off with it. In many cases, it's going to be a decorative art piece, and that certainly is a thing. Uh, just take the Fender Master Build custom shops where they inlay it with gold and diamonds. Those sell for, in some cases, million dollars. Those are art pieces. But the fact remains that this aspect of luxury goods, the status piece, is pure vanity, and that requires people knowing something about the product that you spent lots of money on. And the reality is that the vast majority of people probably can't tell the difference between a Fender Custom Shop and a Squire Starter Pack. And both Fender and Gibson do seem to be actively trying to do something about that. They've been both active in trying to become higher end brands that are known by more people than just guitar players. They're calling themselves lifestyle brands now and collaborating with established high end designers to try and create their own fashion lines. Both brands opened up public storefronts, the Gibson Garage in Nashville and Fender's new four-story flagship store in Japan, and alongside a new apparel line to go with it, F is for Fender. It seems that these brands are trying to establish themselves in a market that isn't necessarily just guitar players, and that would, I suppose, improve the status, luxury status of a guitar with that branding. And finally, let's talk about the category of investment for a luxury guitar. Now this category isn't necessarily a necessity for a luxury item to be a luxury item. Take a luxury car, a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. They depreciate in value the second you drive them off the lot. But it would be naive to think that this isn't a factor that helps sales. If you thought that you'd get your money back or maybe even a profit on a guitar when you sell it, well, you'd probably be more comfortable spending more money on it. Now, investment guitars as a topic is a very complex one and it would require its own video and then that video would go out of date because the market's always changing. If you ask me today, I would say that new guitars aren't very good investments. A good investment will give you one or two things. You can have a store of value where the money that you put in, you'll get back out of it. So it's a nice way of not losing anything. You're breaking even, and I think most people will be happy with that on a guitar purchase. And even better, proper good investment, you make money on the sale. That's also something that no one's going to say no to. But when it comes to new guitars, 
That is very, very rare. There are exceptions, of course, but just buying any high-priced guitar from a well-known manufacturer doesn't guarantee breaking even. Most of the time, you don't break even. Now, there's multiple different types of guitars you can get as an investment piece. You could go vintage guitars, or you can use artist stage played owned guitars. Those are also investment pieces, but those aren't new guitars. So I want to talk about new guitars today. I'm just going to gloss over them, but those, those are valid investment uh, ideas, depending on what you get, of course, market. All, all of that complex topic. When we are talking about new guitars, the safest bet, and it still is a bet, it's a gamble, is signature guitars from a well-known brand, like, like a Gibson signature guitar, and the resale value on that still relies heavily, somewhat like artist-owned and played guitars, on the artist and their popularity. If their popularity goes up, it's likely that your investment will go up. But if their popularity goes down, you know, that, that person did something that people don't like, uh, so does your investment also goes down. So it's a gamble, it's it's a bet, and uh, it relies on the popularity of the artist. Second-hand guitars, depending on the price that you pay, can actually be pretty good investments, like they can store value, because generally, from new, the price goes down. Guitars, a lot of new guitars, are depreciating assets. And it doesn't matter how much you pay for the guitar, they can be very much depreciating assets. It depends on the percentage they depreciate, but it still is a thing. And uh, one way to counteract that, if you owned a guitar company, would be to give the idea of rarity. And the best example I could showcase from this is ESP. ESP used to be in two companies. You had LTD, and that was the budget stuff, and then ESP, that was the higher end stuff. And if you wanted an ESP, you'd be spending like two grand, right? It's a higher end guitar. It's a little bit more expensive than an LTD, but you get an ESP on the headstock, it's an ESP guitar. And that was the case for many, many years, up until 2013, when there was a rebrand. And the Japanese-made standard ESPs were then rebranded to E2, a completely new name. And we all still call it ESPs, but they're E2s. And what that means is that the only guitars made by ESP that actually say ESP are the ESP Custom Shop. And there's a lot less of those being made than any of the other guitars in the ESP lineup. And what that means is for the last 10 years, ESPs or guitars that say ESP are going to be perceived as rarer because there's less of them being made. Not less guitars being made, just less that say ESP. And a great example of this is the comparison between the ESP Alexi Lehu and the E2 Alexi Lehu guitars. Spec wise, they are the exact same guitar, exact same spec sheet. They're both made in the same country of Japan. The only difference is that they're made by different people and one says ESP custom shop on it. It's not even custom, it's the same spec. And uh, the price wise, the E2 is less than half of what the ESP one will cost. So I think it's a very clever move from ESP because it becomes perceived rarity. If they had it set up like in 2013 or before 2013, both of those guitars would say ESP on them. There wouldn't be the perceived rarity for the guitar that says ESP. It's a clever move. Now, whether that's actually helping with the uh, resale value on guitars, keeping the, holding their value, uh, it's I'm yet to have seen compelling evidence um, and that's probably because there just aren't that many of them to compare to because they're they're rarer. But either way, I do think it's a very clever business move on ESP's part uh, because if it helps maintain resale value on the guitars, it will help them sell more guitars. So it is clever. So now I'm going to pass it over to you. What do you think? Are guitars becoming more luxury items or guitars from the more established brands becoming luxury items more so than tools, instruments for musicians to play. I think this is sort of happening, and on the one hand it's sad, but on the other hand, it's kind of good to see that, well, maybe a Gibson Les Paul standard won't be the standard anymore for guitar players. They're still getting good guitars at good prices that they can use as tools. So it, it's, a, it, it's a, a double-edged sword, I'd say. Anyway, thank you for watching, that's the video. If you liked it, subscribe and like the video also. Anyway, uh, yeah, see you next time. Bye-bye.